Hi, I'm Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm so excited to bring to you my top 10 fall fragrances. Now, um, this was actually a lot harder. Uh, there were so more, so many more that I kind of wanted to include, but like, <laughs> maybe I'll just do another one at some point. But these are ones uh, that I just think are so beautiful for fall and was so excited to pull out. Uh, for this season. So when I think fall, and obviously a person can wear whatever fragrance they want whenever they want, but usually in the fall I start to gravitate towards warmer, more spicy, vanillic fragrances. Uh, you know, something that's a little bit more cozy, great for kind of crisp weather. So I've got a few here that I think that you're going to love. But before I do that, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. Join the Weird and Wonderful family. I would love to have you part of the community. And for those of you that are already part of the community, you guys are amazing. So uh, without further ado, let's get into this. I have uh, more affordable options. I've got some niche. I've got some designer, uh, like luxury, affordable, kind of a mix. There's something for everybody here. So the first fragrance that I'm going to share with you is one of the more affordable fragrances and it is Rich Warm Addictive by Zara. Now this is part of the tobacco collection and it's seriously like I, oh, there's just a special place in my heart for this baby. Mm, it smells so, so good. So um, I don't wear this one in the summer in particular, in the hotter weather. It's just too sweet for me. Uh, but as soon as it started to cool off, I was all over this baby all over again. So uh, I tend to wear this one at night and every night when I put it on, I just feel absolutely spectacularly fabulous. This one has honey, coconut, tobacco, sandalwood, and cedar wood. So um, I definitely get that honey, tobacco-y coconut. It kind of has a little bit of a rummy type vibe. Uh, so I kind of get a, a tobacco rum feel from this. Uh, it's very sweet. The longevity isn't fantastic, but if you want uh, just a real addictive, uh, delicious, alluring fragrance. This one you've got to try. It's great for uh, snuggling. It's not overpowering, but it's just so yummy. I seriously, I, I love myself. <laughs> it's just that good. I think it's about 30 Canadian. Uh, I know that there's other ones in this collection and I kind of want to check them out too, but uh, they'd have to be pretty fabulous to uh, stand up to this one. So love it, rich, warm, addictive. Now the next one that I have for you, I believe it's discontinued, but you can still get it on fragrancenet.com. I'm pretty sure they have it there. And it's Classique Essence de Parfum by Jean-Paul Gaultier. So this one, um, I love this one for this time of year. So it's pretty sweet. I wouldn't wear it in the, the spring or the summer unless I was wearing it for kind of an evening scent because it's not overly uh, overpowering. This one has tangerine, aldehydes, and ginger in the opening. And I definitely get that ginger note. To me, it smells kind of like a sparkly, uh, a little bit of a fizzy ginger. So I always think of like a ginger ale type feel because there's quite a lot of sweetness in there. The middle notes are orange blossom and uh, jasmine sandback. I get more of the orange blossom. So definitely there's that sweeter floral component in here. And then the base to me is where this really shines. The base has whipped cream, vanilla, benzoin, cashmere wood, woody notes, and musk. So what I get out of this, that ginger stays and the orange, orange blossom stays. The orange blossom kind of keeps it a little bit lighter, but then as it dries down, you get this whipped cream vanilla feel, almost like a bourbon vanilla. Uh, and then with that ginger, so there's a bit of spice to it. To me, it comes across as a warm gingerbread cake. So at first it's like a sparkling ginger drink. Then you get that whipped cream accord, the ginger, the vanilla, and I just think it's really, really pretty. So yeah, it, it is orange blossom heavy though. So if you're not an orange blossom fan, maybe steer clear of this one. But if you want something warm, sweet, a little bit spicy, this one's a great one. Jean-Paul Gaultier Classique Essence de Parfum. The next uh, super affordable fragrance is uh, Elizabeth Arden's Fifth Avenue Royale. 
Now this one, I think I paid $14.99 Canadian for 75 mils. So it's even cheaper uh, than the, the Zara fragrance. So to me, that's amazing. This is spectacular. Like I love this fragrance. Uh, first of all, I, <laughs> I totally love that price. But this, this smells rich and deep. It's delicious smelling. Uh, you get like, it kind of gives me the Noir Pour Femme vibe. So even though this fragrance is so affordable, it smells luxurious and rich. The ingredients in it to me smell rich. The opening of this one has liquor, uh, it says liquor, uh, raspberry, orange blossom, and bergamot. Now what I get is that it, it kind of smells raspberry liqueur, uh, a little bit darker. Oh, it's just so, so good. Like that opening is amazing. And primarily that's what I get throughout the whole entire fragrance is that opening. Now in the middle notes, you have patchouli, albanum, uh, atlas cedar, and cypriol oil. Uh, the base is suede, labdanum, and amber wood. So what I get out of this one, I get that suede, I get the raspberry, I get the rum, and I just think this one is delicious. For the price, you can't go wrong. It smells luxe. It smells, uh, yeah, it just, it's delicious. And if you like that raspberry note, I love raspberry. I love liquor notes as well. Anything that's kind of like that, I'm all over. So this one is just beautiful. The longevity isn't phenomenal. However, if you give yourself a good dousing, it lasts a decent amount of time. And what you're left with, uh, you know, when it get, becomes a skin scent is just a really beautiful kind of richer, sweet fragrance on your skin. So I love this from beginning to end. One of my favorites, uh, I just enjoy it. So like in this one, although like because it's not overpowering, this is one that in the spring and summer, you could definitely wear it as an evening scent. Um, I this is technically probably considered an evening scent, although in the fall and the winter, I'm gonna rock this during the day because that's just what I do and I love it. Okay, let's just face it, I love all of these, so I'm gonna settle down and not say, I love it after every one. The next fragrance that I have for you that I think is perfect for the fall is Elisab Le Parfum Royal. Now, this is good primarily any time of the year, but especially for fall and winter, it's definitely a more powerful fragrance, so I think it's perfect for the cooler months. Um, I, I literally can't get enough of this fragrance. It is one of the most powerful, sexy, again, it smells expensive, um, it smells grounded, uh, there's a lot of rose in here. I, I primarily get orange and rose. Kind of reminds me of Delina. Um, I've smelt them both side by side. And there is kind of that tartar uh, sense that J Delina has. Delina's a bit more smoky. But this one is just absolutely beautiful. And I don't know if you've seen those, uh, like I think it's on TikTok or Instagram, where I think they're singing the song, I'm Unstoppable, and there's a kid, and then all of a sudden a woman kind of comes over the kid, and then all of a sudden it switches to uh, a lioness over her cub. Uh, for some reason, when I think about this fragrance, I think of that kind of uh, power and, uh, you know, someone that's assertive and has authority and walks in it and doesn't get pushed around and acts like the queen she is. That's this fragrance. So I think that the name is perfect for it. Uh, yeah, primarily orange and rose is what I get out of this one, but it is so, so beautiful. And it's relatively affordable. Like I think I got this bottle for $50 Canadian uh, and it's a hundred mil um, maybe that's wrong, but it, it was definitely well under $100. And to me, this smells well over that. So anyway, check it out. Now the next fragrance, I pretty much pull it out every fall, is Nirvana Rose by Elizabeth and James. And I always comment on the bottle. This to me is the most stunning bottle. It looks like autumn. Um, and yeah, I just, I just love this bottle. And the fragrance, to me, um, this, this fragrance doesn't smell designer. It smells more niche. 
Uh, this has rose, geranium, and vetiver in it. Um, it's just beautiful. To me, I've said this before, it smells it smells like roses and wine. It smells like if you took a rose that was kind of starting to wilt, so not a fresh dewy rose, but more of a rose that's starting to die so that you know how the smell gets a little bit more potent. Smells a little bit like that, maybe a little bit dusty with that vetiver, but to me it comes across as a rose wine combination. Like I think of something dry, like a dry red wine is what I get when I smell this. It smells, to me, I, I get a little bit of a mouth-watering feel smelling this. Um, it smells like it has tannins in it, if that makes sense. And I just think it's absolutely spectacular. When I smell this, I imagine myself wearing like a pair of really beautiful brown boots with a scarf and a sweater, like one of those cable knit sweaters and all the leaves are on the ground and you're walking through the leaves and there's the crunch uh, and the air is crisp and you can smell everything around you. That's kind of what vibe this gives me. So a little bit cozy, almost a wistful feel is what I get when I wear this one. Um, it reminds me of when I was in my 20s and I would go for walks. Uh, there was this lake that was kind of like, I don't know, it was quite a ways away from my house, but I loved going out there and I'd wear this long trench coat with a scarf and uh, my boots and walk along the edge of the water. And I don't know, it kind of felt a little bit moody, a little bit wistful, like for whatever reason, this that's what this makes me think of. So I love this one. This perfume has a special place in my heart. Um, I don't think I would ever declutter this even when I'm finished the fragrance. Somehow this just holds sentimental uh, feels for me. So anyway, Nirvana Rose by Elizabeth and James. The next fragrance that I have for you is absolutely gorgeous and it's Michael Kors Twilight Shimmer. Now this one has some Loatian Oud in it. It's like a very light Oud, a little bit synthetic, but I just love this one. It has plum and red berries in the opening, Loatian Oud in the mid, and the base is praline and woody notes. So it's just, it's just gorgeous. Like you get this uh, plummy vibe mixed with the Oud and then that praline. That, those are the kind of the three notes that I really notice is the plum, uh, this lighter, sweeter oud, and then the praline. So I just think it smells delectable. There's a little bit of a sensuality to it because of that plum. So yeah, I don't know, like, <laughs> I, guess, I guess as well with me, um, oud kind of has a, a sexy quality to it. So, mm, you know, it kind of gives you that, feel like oh like I don't know why but anytime I smell oud it just it just gets to me <laughs> so mix that with plum which is kind of a more sensual uh you know fruit somehow deep rich uh and then with that praline in there and I just think this is smoky plummy deliciousness uh, the longevity is mediocre on this one, like it's not phenomenal, uh, but I think it's really, really pretty. It's super sexy. Um, it's not so in your face, like it's not so powerful that you couldn't wear it during the day. Basically, I rock anything I want lately because I'm not ever around anyone, so I, if I want to smell like a sex bomb all day, that's what I'm going to do. So this is this one's good. Definitely worth checking out. Next fragrance I want to talk about is Fragrance du Bois Milano. Now this fragrance, first of all, the bottle is so heavy. Like it's so heavy, like compared to these other bottles, so, so heavy uh, that it's almost hard to lift up. Like I could actually do weights with this. <laughs> anyway, gorgeous bottle. The fragrance is just beautiful. This one is definitely um, um, unisex. Um, although it does have enough sweetness that a guy would have to really enjoy the sweet uh, to, to want to wear this one. So it's unisex, but it leans just ever so slightly feminine. This one opens with orange, saffron, thyme, and bergamot. Um, 
I don't I don't notice anything but this like I do notice the saffron so I definitely get that little bit of spice in the middle you have fruity notes jasmine and olbanum in the base you have leather vanilla musk amber and woody notes the leather in here is beautiful it's not overpowering it gives it a sense of sensuality like I think of a new leather jacket that's soft and supple uh, you know that kind of feel it's got like there's a little bit of a cigarette feel I think it's probably from the saffron uh, so it just gives me that slight understated sensuality with that leather and the saffron but then it's paired so nicely with the fruity aspect uh, and the floral so I really enjoy wearing this one I think it's beautiful it's not super long lasting like I've worn it and I, it projected really beautifully for about three hours uh, and then it tends to go more as a skin scent on me. Once once it hits the skin scent, you just get a, a lightly sweet, uh, more woody uh, effect on your skin. So it's not overpowering. Um, like sometimes fragrances go a little weird after like it's been on your skin for six hours. This one doesn't. It just keeps evolving. Uh, it smells really nice, but more woody than sweet. Uh, when it gets to that major major deep dry down so hope that makes sense what it reminded me of I think I mentioned this on the video I always think of a woman she's really put together she's wearing uh, expensive clothes but understated so like a very expensive uh, well-made cotton white cotton shirt uh, nice trousers uh, leather mules uh, beautiful handbag. She's loaded, she's luxe, uh, but she's not trying to look that way. She just is, if that makes sense. So this fragrance is relaxed, uh, luxe, sensual. Uh, it's really pretty. It's definitely worth checking out. Next fragrance is L'Entredi by Givenchy. Now this fragrance, it has pear in the opening. There's bergamot, I, I think a few other things. Um, primarily what I get out of this is prepare from the opening, tuberose from the mid, and then vanilla and a little hint of that vetiver in the base. So this smells delectably sweet. There's a bit of freshness from that pear. It smells actually kind of almost syrupy, thick, uh, but then with that beautiful tuberose floral, it's just stunning. Like I love this one. It's so feminine. Uh, but then with the vanilla and the vetiver, like it smells cozy. The vetiver brings a bit of grounding to it so it doesn't get too sweet. I just think it's a gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. It's long lasting, like long lasting. Like I'd say I get about eight hours out of this. It projects for at least five or six. Uh, I, I just think it's stunning. And when I think of this fragrance, I think of a, 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 an extremely feminine woman who's a, like very generous and you know I just imagine her at a party and she's wearing kind of a beautiful flowy uh, kind of situation and she's always smiling she's so warm it'd be like she's the hostess she goes around and she gives big hugs to everybody kisses on the cheek uh, smiling, laughing, life of the party. Uh, that's what this one is. It's just so, so pretty, but it's not, uh, it's not loud and boisterous as much as it is just warm, inviting, classy. Uh, yeah, like ever smiling. I love this fragrance. And it actually kind of reminds me of my mom. My mom was one of the most classy. Well, she still is. <laughs> she... Don't worry, mom, you're still classy. <laughs> Anyway, I think she wore L'Entredi back when, like way back when, before it was reformulated and whatnot, because I remember this scent and I can remember I would go in for a hug and my mom had this beautiful leather uh, jacket with this fox fur and the fox fur always smelled so amazing. And I think it smells similar to this. So when I smell this, I just think of uh, classy, warm woman, because my mom was, uh, like, she was, she was awesome. Well, she still is. Mom, you're still here. You're still awesome. So this fragrance just reminded me of, you know, somehow that nurturing, uh, but classy lady. This one, love it. 
It smells sexy too, don't get me wrong. It doesn't smell like a mom. It's just, well, not that moms shouldn't smell. Okay, I'm digging myself into a hole. This one's great. <laughs> Next fragrance is a more affordable fragrance. I think this was about $29 around there. Uh, maybe a little less, and it's Sofia Vergara's Love. Now, um, I was so enamored by the original Sofia, by Sofia Vergara, that this one at first, I'm like, oh, it's just not as good. Um, but I think the issue is you can't compare the two. They're just too different. Um, this one, uh, surprisingly, I have begun to enjoy more and more. If I'm wanting something that smells a little denser, a little richer, a little more fruity, uh, a little in the, you know, the genre of, let's say, La Nuit Trésor, A La Folie, or Black Opian-esque, that would be this one. And um, it, it really smells quite delicious. So it's got the kind of more juicy, uh, fruit like a fruit uh, compote where it's kind of cooked down uh, mixed with kind of the more sweet caramel chocolatey type vibes is what I get out of this. At first I thought that this wasn't actually overly long lasting like not compared to Sophia but I wore this one to bed last night and when I woke up in the morning, so like eight hours later, I could still smell it on my wrist quite strong. This one in the opening has passion fruit, orange blossom, mandarin orange, and green apple. I get more of the passion fruit than anything. In the mid, it has Colombian coffee, orchid, coffee blossom, orris, and magnolia. I don't really notice any of those florals. Um, I don't actually notice the coffee either. Like I notice more of that passion fruit with a little bit of depth. In the base you have praline, vanilla, amberwood, and musk mallow. What I get out of this is I get the kind of, like I said, a fruit compote. Uh, there's a bit of depth to it. Um, smells a little bit chocolatey, like it's got that praline in, so that's probably it. It's just a sweet, kind of more alluring nighttime fragrance, although this one's light enough uh, that to me you can pull it off uh, during the day, um, especially like obviously in the fall and the winter. This one is a great kind of seductive date night fragrance for like a summer or a spring. Uh, so you can pull it off all year round, but during the cooler months, I think that this is fine for daytime. Uh, and yeah, I just think it's, it's a, a more deep, rich, um, fruity fragrance. So definitely worth sniffing. Next fragrance, I just recently talked about this in my haul, so I'm not going to go into too much detail this video, but I am so pumped about wearing this for the fall. It's Ylang Ylang Espresso by Floral Street. This is just the sexiest thing ever. <laughs> to me, this one comes across similar to Cafe Tuberosa by Atelier Cologne. Um, this one has espresso in it. It's got tiramisu. It's got Szechuan pepper. This is a spicy sex bomb of a fragrance and I'm in love with it. It's delicious. Um, it's, it's, it starts off kind of a little bit somehow lipsticky. There's no iris or violet or anything like that, but it ge gives me a bit of a lipstick vibe somehow, like the old school lipstick. Um, there's a little bit of a cigarette -y type thing, not the same as this one. Uh, this one is a little bit more airy in that cigarette -y note, like cigarette -y leather note. This one, I think it's the coffee. It smells a little bit like a really dark roast coffee. Uh, with a little bit of cigarettes thrown in. I don't know what the deal is with this one, but man, I'm so in love with it. And as it dries, it becomes like it, you get that more of that tiramisu, the coffee stays the whole entire time, but it's a little bit more gourmand. Uh, they actually consider this gourmand, although in the opening, I wouldn't say that it smells gourmand. My mom smelt this and she basically retched. She thought it smelled so stinky and she's like, why would anyone even put this on? So uh, it may be a punishment for all of those around me, but I think I smell so freaking good, like sexy-ish amazingness. It's it like I just, I love this one. Definitely worth sniffing, even though, even if you hate this fragrance, it's worth sniffing. So if you get the little floral street kit, you can smell it. 
Um, I absolutely love this one. I love this one in Black Lotus. It's, it's deep, it's dark, it's mysterious, it's not normal. Definitely, uh, I can see it being challenging for many people. Uh, but if you love it, you love it, and you love it hard. <laughs> so Ylang Ylang Espresso by Floral Street. The last fragrance that I have for you that I'm so excited to wear for the fall is Velvet Vanilla by Mansara. So this one, you can wear it any time of the year to me, except for summer. Summer, it's too much. So this is extremely sweet. It's extremely tuberose heavy. So if you don't like tuberose, just walk away. Uh, this one smells almost candy-like. It's so sweet uh, with the tuberose. The tuberose is definitely bubblegummy. Now there's pear in it and tuberose. So they do share similar notes to this, but um, I don't think that they smell anything alike. So this one is way sweeter, way more vanillic. Uh, this one is more, you get more pear in this one, match, uh, like pear, paired with the tuberose. Uh, this one's a little bit more well-rounded. This one's way more sweet, uh, but I just love this one. And as this one dries down, so you get the floral, there's a little bit of a green hint to this. I think there's angelica in this one. Uh, but as this one dries down, it becomes more and more vanillic. And to me, in the end, it smells like, uh, it, it gives me the feel of powdered uh, icing sugar, like, like a buttercream icing, is what it dries down to on my skin. It smells like, you know how uh, scents like Aquilina Pink Sugar, they're super, super sweet. This smells sweet but it smells a lot more sophisticated. So it's more complex. Uh, it's, it's got a sophisticated vibe. I enjoy this one. It's very powerful, so you don't have to wear much. And I love it for the cooler months. When it's cold out and I put something sweet on, uh, especially when it's a little bit thicker and syrupy like these ones, like, like this one or L'Entredie, I just, I, I don't know, I just, it makes me feel all cozy and I don't know, somehow just happy. So all these fragrances I love wearing, I'm enjoying wearing, and highly recommend you checking them out. Uh, let me know what your favorite fall fragrances are. I would love to know. Uh, leave them in the comments. And other than that, hope you have an amazing week, and we'll talk to you soon.